Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Uh, we have here the Leslie 910. Uh, I've made a couple of videos on this uh, at this stage and today we're just basically talking about Leslie simulations versus having a real Leslie. Now a lot of times people will jump and say, oh you know, having a real Leslie is the best possible scenario. Um, I tend to agree with that to a certain point. There are other factors that go into uh, owning a real Leslie that a lot of people don't think about. And that is, uh, number one, um, considering the amount of space uh, that you have to house a Leslie, uh, I suppose you'd say. Uh, this particular 910 is one of the largest Leslies that they ever made. Uh, there is a 925, which is I think slightly taller, slightly bigger, I'm not too sure. But um, the sheer uh, size and diameter, uh, just the volume of this Leslie um, is quite, quite big. And unless you've got a decent amount of space to keep something like that, it can pose a bit of a problem. Um, also portability wise, uh, these Leslies, the 910, um, Solid state Leslie's were designed to be moved and uh, gigged with. I mean, you can you can gig with any Leslie. You know, like for instance, with a 122 or 147, they always need to be standing straight up uh, in a vertical position. With uh, the solid state Leslie's, um, they're a little bit more forgivable with that. Um, you can tr transport them laying down. So size and transportability is is a factor in owning um, a real Leslie. It's another thing to consider then what you're going to do about miking your, your Leslie. In this case, let's turn up our um, turn up our light just a little bit here. That's a bit better. In this case, we've just got a pair of uh, pencil condensers on either side um, of the Leslie. There's another one over there you can barely see. Uh, but I find that this um, format works best for me. But there, there again, that's tying back in with that you're going to have to mic it at some stage. So that increases the space that uh, this entire unit's going to, to take up. You then have to consider the acoustics of the room, how that's going to affect how you mic uh, the Leslie itself. There's a few other things to consider as well. Uh, there is maintenance. For the actual type of uh, oil that you use, some people, they will buy uh, Leslie oil, I believe they sell. But I've got, uh, I've got actual Hammond tone generator oil, uh, which works just as good. Now, I have put a couple of drops in here, even though I know that this Leslie has been serviced recently, um, just to maintain and just to make sure that, you know, that's, there's going to be no issues there. With the bottom rotor and a, a lot of these solid state units, the bearings are in a sealed um, contained unit uh, for the baffle. So they're not really requiring too much oiling, or if they do, um, it may just be due to th their vintage and maybe they need a bit of extra help. Not too sure how that works. Uh, with your motors, it's the same thing. Uh, now, don't quote, quote me, but I think that you can just use the Hammond generator oil for the motors, um, but it's something I'm going to, uh, to leave um, at, at, at this stage because I need to learn a little bit more about that. So yeah, it, it's the maintenance as well um, for these units. Power consumption is another thing that a lot of people don't consider. There are a total of four motors inside this unit, in, inside the 910, I'm gonna switch it on. And that controls your uh, fast and slow, and not to mention the, the power amp that's inside of this is that's quite considerable. Now the solid state Leslie's, they are not tube. Um, I'm not too sure exactly how much of a difference uh, of the draw and power that a tube amp will have as opposed to solid state. Um, there would be someone out there who knows uh, a bit more about that than I do, but I would imagine that the solid state probably doesn't draw as much power. Could be wrong. So the power consumption is another thing you want to think about. Um, obviously, if you're living in an apartment as well, uh, or somewhere where you can't make a lot of noise, you might want to consider uh, a Leslie simulator. Uh, if you have cats, well, you might want to consider um, maybe getting a simulator. 
uh, because the fabric on these guys are just, that is an invitation for your favorite pet to come along and just dig right in with their claws. I love Mechanical Leslie's. I think they're just terrific and the sound, in my opinion, can't be beat. With a simulator, it takes away, number one, your need for a lot of extra space in your studio and for you to consider acoustic spaces and things like that and microphones. Uh, the Ventilator 2, in my opinion, has got to be on the top rung for uh, rotary speaker simulator. And uh, even though mine broke down um, after a couple of years, it's, it's my second choice. If, if I wasn't able to get my hands on the, the 910, uh, I would have settled for another uh, Ventilator 2 because they are top-notch at this stage. Uh, the T-Rex Leslie and how great it would be if someone would just, you know, if IK Multimedia would just stick that effect into a stomp box, something that's independent of a, of a computer that could just stand on its own merit, that, that effect, you know, we're, we're talking really serious, high, high quality standard for your Leslie simulator. Uh, and again, this is my opinion. If anyone can think of any of the other positives or negatives for or against, you know, the uh, mechanical Leslie versus uh, a simulation, pop them down in the comment section. I, I love hearing about this stuff. I love uh, getting other opinions from other musicians who um, know even more about these units. Pop it down in the comment section. Let me know uh, what you use, what you prefer. I've used Leslie simulators for many, many years. I love them. But my opinion is that once you get into a room, uh, no matter how big or how small, uh, with a proper uh, mechanical Leslie, there's just something about it. You, ca you can't beat it. You know, the, the wind, the sheer wind that comes off of it. I'm just going to move my little flashlight here so it doesn't uh, clip those horns. But when we go into the fast mode, there's something about sitting here hearing that mechanical hum off of the the motor the horns little idiosyncrasies it's like you are with a living breathing beast that's right beside your organ right beside you right in your ear and you know the, even the, even the smell like i'm sitting here and the smell that this throws off from those horns and the wind that comes at you from that. You know, this thing, this thing is pushing wind like you wouldn't believe. And there's something special about that, that smell that comes out of there. You can, you can smell that Hammond oil, the tone of the, the smell of the wood, um, the smell of the motors, the, the circuits, you know, you, you don't get that with a simulation. Now, the sound as well. You can't beat the sound. You know, this is physically throwing sound around inside of a room, inside of a space that is unique uh, to the um, listener's position where, where you are in relation to the, into the speaker, the Leslie speaker. And you know, the, the bottom rotor down here as well, you get that, you know, sub low end that is just incredible. You know, you can feel that base in your diaphragm, in your chest, um, your whole body, it just, you know, grips you. So it's one of those things that, that y you can't get that effect from a simulation. I'm so thankful to have this unit because it reminds me that the music, um, the sound exists outside of a computer. It exists outside of a box and it's not, a thing that can completely be replaced by digital. You know, even just the sight of seeing those horns in there, spinning around, you know it's, it's, it's in there, it's working for you. It's just, like, it's just a friendly beast, I don't know why, but that's just how it feels. Let's, uh, let's let the Leslie do some talking for us. The Hammond and the Leslie. <laughs> 